for 10 years. Can I do one more French song? a bit, even though they're masked. Well, what could I do? Did you expect to see me on, on stage somewhere? Nobody's on stage, sadly. Well, this is my 50th year in the profession. 50 years ago, and I was going to celebrate that this summer, singing the old countess in Tchaikovsky's Queen of Spades with David Neely and um, Matthew Ozawa and with uh, Sarah Gartland singing, yes. It was going to be fabulous. <laughs> I don't hear from you masked people around here. I want to hear a little bit of audience because I can't hear anything from you out there. You see what I mean? 50 years in the business, think of it. Think of it. <laughs> Nineteen hundred and seventy, I made my debut, San Francisco Opera. I was in Western Opera Theater, the apprentice program of San, San Francisco Opera. Remember? And uh, no, you don't remember, but <laughs> I remember. And I was called by Kurt Herbert Adler, the great impresario of San, San Francisco Opera, to come into the fall season and sing Sia Bell in Faust with all the biggies. And I had to learn it in 24 hours. 
and I didn't know even the aria. That was, that was called sudden death. <laughs> but of course, I wanted to do it. So 50 years ago, 50 years, and this summer was to be my 140th role. So I guess I've only sung 139. <laughs> it's sad, isn't it? It's sad. It is kind of. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Well, I was going to do excerpts. But it seems, I don't know, Sam, do you think, uh, oh, Sam Carroll is here, and Scott Ahrens is here. Hello. 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 Hello <laughs> and, the and an intern, Kayla, is here. And at the piano, the maestro, Mark Farrell. Mark and I have collaborated many, many times at the University of Kansas. Have we not? Yes. That's true. A hundred and forty roles. Well, I, I'm terribly sorry because I did ask you into my home. I asked you into my home and, well, I wore a robe. I, I, I don't think it's really a very good idea. So I, may I just take it off. <laughs> but you see, I did that very well. And I could just step out and kick it to Kayla. <laughs> Got it? Got it? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> so, I've done many different kinds of roles, as you can imagine. But not what, what I look like, what do I look like? What do I sound like? Friends of opera, and Scott, and Sam, and all of you. I look like an ingenue. So yes, true. a soprano, an ingenue. Have I done many ingenue roles? Sadly, they see me differently. They see me, they see me very differently. <laughs> but when I was in the first grade, this, this, might, this takes me back a little ways, but I played Little Red Riding Hood <laughs> in the first grade in Golden, Colorado in the Little Musical. My brother was there. He will, he will, he will attest to that, I'm sure, but he's not here. Well, he's out there, Neil. But um, why did I do Little Red Riding Hood? You might, you might ask. The girl that was to do Little Red Riding Hood, Joan Mayberry, a little tiny blonde thing with little ringlets and blue eyes, got sick. And I got on. What do you think, Sam? It's amazing. Good, huh? good. good. Good for me, right? Exactly. Yeah. So that was, that was my ingenue. I've done so many different kinds of roles. The general directors, I even have to say Michael Eagle and David Neely see me in a different light. Really? Yes, they do. And in my 139 roles, I'm being, I'm being Luciano now. Except, I love him, I love him. Um, it's not big enough, but then I'm not a tenor. And, oh, definitely not a tenor. <laughs> um, I've, um, what do they see me as? Old ladies, old funny ladies, old silly ladies, old crazy ladies, old serious ladies. Ballad of Baby Doe, I've done so many Augusta Tabers. Nuns. Dialogues of the Carmelites. Ah, Fata Morgana in The Love for Three Oranges. Maurice Sendak and Frank Corsaro at New York City Opera. Um, and I must tell you that in Missouri, there is a man named Chuck Andrews that makes me, one moment please, that makes me, where is it? Bears. This is my bearded lady, Bear. What, what role would that be? Baba the Turk in Rake's Progress, Stravinsky. Because he, got, he, he started following my career. So he, he, he uh, there you are. There's that. There's um, Strawberry Fields, Michael Torkey, the little lady on the park bench, 
We did great performances of that. Beautiful opera. Beautiful. You see what I mean. Oh dear, I knocked over one of my bears. You can help me, Mark. You, you can help me. But also, amidst all of this, there was Wagner. Val, Valtrautas, there were Frickas, there was in, at the Met, in, in Montreal, in Seattle, yes. <laughs> quite a, a holler fest. This is my baton. David Neely might want to borrow this. It came with the piano. I swear to God. You know. And she said, this goes with it. So, so it is. And uh, in Santa Fe Opera, I, you see, I have also played men, because I told you I did Ciabel, right? In San Francisco. Also, see, I don't think I did it anywhere else. Oh, somewhere. I can't remember. I can't find it. Um, but Orlovsky I did at the Met, and a wonderful production, Santa Fe Opera, Charles Ludlum production. Yes. Oh, yes, I need something. I need this. Nazimova in The Dream of Valentino, the hat, the hat. Uh, I, was a, so, I was in Washington Opera, Dominic Argento. What do you think? What do you think? Stunning. Thank you. Thank you. It's yes. Made in Rome at the house of Valentino. That was worth doing the role. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, 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 oh, I know. And I've done a lot of sorceresses and witches, but there's one witch that was is just so sweet. Could we do that one? My name is Rosie, not dainty mouth. for someone, Hal Prince, in London, and they hired me for Sweeney Todd. And you were going to do Sweeney Todd, weren't you? You were going to do Sweeney Todd, right? Yes, sure. with, um, with uh, Lucy Schaefer, mm -hmm. right? Yes, as Mrs. Lovett. Well, I sang, 
I signed for Hal in London, and he said, good, we're going to do it. The first time it'll ever be in an opera house, Houston Grand Opera. So, so it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, I just happened to have a whisk. <laughs> was there with us, and Mr. Stephen Sondheim was there each time. That's heady, I would say. At the same time we were doing Sweeney's at um, New York City Opera with Beverly, they were doing Candide. So, um, Leonard Bernstein's Candide. So at the same time, I sort of, I got in contact with uh, Bernstein, oh, oh yes, I was going to do this one. And he hired me for this. Oh dear. Have I got my hot apron? No, this won't do. Oh, here, Kayla. No, I guess I didn't do Kunaganda, did I, Mark? I, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Beverly saw me more as the old lady. <laughs> Sondheim and Hal Prince and Beverly Sills and Leonard Bernstein. A wonderful time, a really wonderful time for me. Um, Bernstein, I also did the first performances of Arias and Bar Pearls with Lenny, a four, four hand piano. Lenny here, Michael Tilson Thomas lower. That was that, that got your attention. And they, I, I wanted to sing something that he wrote for Carl Böhm. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's for his birthday, birthday of Carl Böhm. And for this, um, if you will excuse me, Michael, Michael and David, will you excuse me and the donors and all of you? For this one, I really should use um, uh, uh, some music. I hope you will. Forgive me for that, will you, Sam? I will. Oh, good. Okay. It's a lot of words. Oh, wait. It is. Okay. Thank you. Bum, 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 bum,
you see why I needed the music. <laughs> I think we all know. I'll take a little bow there because it was it was strenuous. Oh dear, it got a little hot. Did you notice that, Mark? Oh yeah. It's summer, did you know? Yeah, it's summer. And we should be in Des Moines Metro, I know. But we're doing the best we can because we can't go into theaters. We all know that. I've, I missed my Mrs. Lovett bear. Isn't that sweet? And and my Mikado bear, and my Clytemnestra bear. That was my debut at Des Moines Metro. David remembers that, don't we? And uh, Brenda Harris uh, sang the role of my dear daughter, Electra. I was the hideous Clytemnestra the mother of the year for sure. <laughs> you will be happy to know I will not sing an excerpt from Clytemnestra. It might scare the little children. Yeah, you're glad to, okay. <laughs> then we did Yenufa and, oh yes, this, Bon Appetite. I, I don't know what that is, uh, but uh, it'll come back to me, it'll come back to me. Jake Hagee is a wonderful American composer, and I know you've had him at, at Des Moines Metro. You've done Three Decembers, yeah. and you've also done Dead Man, Walking. Dead Man Walking. Wonderful. I've done Three Decembers. That robe I was in at first was from Central City Opera, and I did End of the Affair in Seattle. But um, then... I asked Jake if he would write a cycle for me, and he did. It's called Statuesque. It's about statues of women. I forgot to tell you about this, Scott. One of them was Hatshepsut, an ancient pharaoh. Hatshepsut likes to be on my mantle. I also have the winged victory in the other room. But I was going to do what he, what he thought was, what he uh, wrote a song about the head of a woman by Picasso. This is Head of the Woman, Picasso. Mademoiselle, oui. you have an interesting face. Like to come with me. I am Picasso. Can you keep a secret? His name meant nothing to me, but his tie was beautiful. And he was a charming. Studied my face. I did all he asked me to do. Can you keep a secret? It was utterly thrilling, covered with love, kisses, admiration. My life with him was always hidden, quiet, and peaceful. I thought we had all that he needed. Can you keep a secret? At the time, Picasso had one lover 
in public and one lover, Marie Therese, this particular head of a woman that he wrote, that he made a, a sculpture of, never in public. So Jean Shear took, took off on that with his libretto. <laughs> I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> so yes, all right, it's bon appetit. I re just remembered, it's bon appetit. And we had a lot of fun. Um, Eldon Little played for me, and Nathan Troop uh, directed it. And I had four apprentices running around and helping. Joyner and Catherine and Robert and Quinn Berdiger. Berdiger was on the floor, sweeping up everything I messed up. Those four really, really were wonderful to, to play with. That was just last year, and I guess they're showing it again this, this virtual season. But, two, but last year, last year, we go back to Stephen Sondheim. And um, what was I going to say? I can't remember. Well, why, I think maybe I need uh, uh, a cane. At the villa of the Baron Gisignac, where I spent a somewhat infamous year. At the villa of the Baron Gisignac, I had ladies in attendance, fire opal pendants, liaisons. What's happened to them? Liaisons today. Yes, that was a beautiful, beautiful. What a wonderful piece that is. <laughs> um, I'm going to stand up and give, a, uh, give my cane to Kayla. Thank you so much. Um, since I'm going to speak to the, to the uh, apprentices sometime, I can't remember what day, I'm going to have a little session with the apprentices, aren't I, Sam? Yep. And so I thought it was interesting for me to uh, perhaps talk a bit about, about uh, uh, singing. Oh, about singing and my, my way of singing. Uh, a pedagogy. So, uh, wait a minute. So in the 1950s, in London, two men who, who wrote songs that were ex especially clever and will show off my um, vocal um, uh, creative uh, uh, style. And um, Michael Flanders and Donald Swan wrote all of these songs. And in this case, well, actually, they wrote a lot of animal songs. This particular song is about a gnu. A year ago last Thursday, I was strolling through the zoo when I met a man who thought he knew a lot. He was laying down the law about the habits of baboons and the number of quills a porcupine has got. I asked him, what's that creature there? He answered, it's a hulk. I might have gone on thinking it was true. Had that animal in question not put that chap to shame and replied, I ain't a hulk. I'm a good Oh my. I'm a good I'm a good The nicest of good nature in the zoo. I'm a good How do you do? You really ought to know who's who. I'm a good Spell G N U. Taken for an 
furnished lodgings down on Rustington on Sea. Once I traveled on to Ashton under Lyme. And the second night I stayed there, I was awakened by a dream, which I'll tell you all about some other time. Among the hunting trophies on the wall above my head, stuffed and mounted, was a face I thought I knew. A bison, an okapi. Could it be a heart a beast? Then I seem to hear a voice. Oh. I could get you. I could never get you. I wish I could gnash my teeth at you. I could get you. How do you do? You really ought to know what was for who. I could get you. Spell G N U. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to be very brave to sing something like that to an audience of opera goers. And if I need to apologize, well, there it is. I apologize. On the other hand, I think they're wonderful. I think Michael Flanders and Donald Swan are wonderful. Don't you, Sam? <laughs> Do you? Yes. Well, you have to say that, I'm sure. <laughs> so, yes, I was, yes, I was Madame Armfeld. But when I was uh, working with, with Steve Sondheim early in my time with Steve in New York, he did a, um, he produced a, a recording of all of his music. And um, about eight of us were in it. And he asked me to sing, send in the clowns. So I didn't do that with Mrs. Armfeld, but. Isn't it rich? Are we a pair? Me here at last on the ground. You in send in the clowns. Isn't it bliss? Don't you approve? One who keeps tearing around, one who can't move. Where are the clowns? Send in the clowns. Just when I'd stopped opening doors, finally knowing the one that I wanted was yours. Making my entrance again with my usual flair, sure of my lines, no one is there. Don't you love farce? My fault, I fear. I thought that you'd want what I want. Sorry, my dear. And where are the clowns? Quick, send in the clowns. Don't bother their heat. Is 
Isn't it rich? Isn't it queer? Losing my time in this late in my career. And where are the clowns? There ought to be clowns. Well, maybe next year. Is that a perfect song? I ask you now. That, I think, is a perfect song. <laughs> Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> Yeah, what am I doing? Oh, yes, I know. I know. Okay. I thought I'd bring a, bring a little, an older piece of music. Oh, I'm losing my pants. Never mind. I think we have to pep up, don't you? I think we'd better. Johnny Mercer, Harold Arlen. You gotta accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative and latch on to the affirmative and don't mess with mister in between you gotta spread joy up to the maximum and bring gloom down to the minimum and spread joy or pandemonium liable to come out on the scene to illustrate my last remark, Jonah and the whale, Noah in the ark. What did they do? Just when everything looks so dark, man is such a better accent. You ate the positive and eliminate the negative and latch on to the affirmative and don't mess with Mr. In-Between. No, don't mess with Mr. In-Between. No. <laughs> 1944. 1944. And, uh, oh, I know, I know. Stevenson, uh, uh, Leonard Bernstein with um, with lyrics of uh, Alan J. Lerner. This is a, a song they wrote for a musical called 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Take care of this house. Keep it from harm If bandits break in Sound the alarm Care for this house Shine it by hand And keep it so clean The glow can be seen All over this land Be careful at night Check all the doors. If someone makes off with a dream, the dream will be yours. Take care of this house. Be always on call. Care for this house. It's the hope of us all. We're going to be back in the theaters. I know we will. We're going to, aren't we, Sam? Aren't we, Scott? We're going to be back. And, and then we won't have to just be, be, in, be in a house, somebody's house. But that's where we are this year. And, well, I'll be seeing you in 
all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces all day through. But I'll be seeing 